Hi, Mikael. Doesn't seem long since doesn't seem long since I last spoke to you just before a trip to Wembley. It's only been a few weeks. I just wanted to ask you really about what's how hard is it mentally for you and the squad to switch on to a new season when it's literally only been three weeks since the end of the last. Well, it's not hard because we really like our job and we have the privilege to work in this industry. But um, yeah, we needed some some time to just reflect on what we did and as well to put our minds a little bit away from football. Um, I think we have the chance to do it, not as we normally do, but uh, enough. And the players seem in good condition mentally and physically. So we are ready to start to go. We have no choice. We have a, a cup to play on Saturday. Obviously, you saw you in action against uh, MK Dons on Tuesday night. A lot of attention, on certainly on social media, was on William Saliba's performance. What have you made of him, the way he settled into the squad since he's since you've sort of had a, had a chance to look at him properly? Well, he's been training really hard. Uh, he stayed here in London to do a better preparation, and uh, and you can tell that he looks ready. Obviously, there are a lot of things that are new for him, and he will need to adapt. But uh, certainly, he has the the right qualities for this football club and as well the right um, attitude um, to keep improving and showing the play that he can be for our future. Thanks, Mikael. Thanks, Rob. Uh, before we go to John from BBC, just to confirm that the embargo for this first section is 3.30 today. Um, so we go over to uh, John Southall from BBC. Hello, Mikael. How are you? Hi, Mikael. Can you hear me there? Hello. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Um, you. You briefly touched on it there, but what, what kind of shape are the, are the squad in? You haven't had much time to prepare for the game. Um, match sharpness, presumably they're, they're still quite a way off that, are they? Uh, well, we had two training sessions, so <laughs> you can imagine that uh, this game comes um, straight in the middle of our mini pre-season, but uh, as well, we hadn't had uh, much time to lose uh, a lot of the condition. But obviously, it's not uh, an ideal moment to play this final. But um, the players are motivated. Obviously, it's another opportunity to win a trophy. And uh, we will go for it. And in terms of um, the COVID testing, um, is anybody in quarantine? Has anybody failed a test since they came back? No, we've been through all different uh, moments. Uh, you know, with all the restrictions and all the rules from government, Premier League testing, it's always so unexpected uh, what's going to happen the next day. We are trying to adapt and, and get uh, the team in the best possible way to compete on Saturday. And looking at uh, the players in the squad, obviously a lot of talk about uh, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Where are you with, uh, with his contract? Is he, is he close to signing a, a new deal? Well, I keep being positive. Uh, we have some really good talks with, with him and his agents um, and I am pretty confident that uh, we're going to find an agreement soon. That's my feeling again. Which will be a massive lift to everybody, won't it? Absolutely. And for him as well, I think uh, I think he should be very happy if he's able to stay at the club for a long time and uh, I think people will be delighted with, uh, with those news. Obviously, you're building a side here at Arsenal. You, do you think with this squad you've got and who you're hoping to bring in that you're now ready for a really serious challenge of, of top four, maybe beyond next season? Well, let's see how we, we look like at the end of the transfer window. It just started. Everything looks uh, pretty slow at the moment. Not many teams moving aggressively. So a lot of things are going to happen from now till the 6th of October. So um, I will probably be in, in a better condition. But it doesn't matter the square we have. We will challenge uh, for the top 100%. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, John. We'll move to Ian Abraham from TalkSport. Hi, Mikhail. How are you? Hi, Ian. Um, we've heard today about Paul Pogba testing positive for the coronavirus and various players at other clubs uh, in the Premier League, uh, three or four other clubs. Um, it does go to show that the virus is still a real danger to, to the sport, isn't it? Yeah, that is still not in football in our society. And uh, we need to be aware of that. Um, the fact sometimes that you go on holidays makes you think that everything is gone, you know, and, but we have to start back, uh, you know, being really cautious, like maintaining our distances, all the security measurements that we have in place. 
And if we are able to provide that, uh, we shown ourselves and, and to the world that uh, we can create safe environments for our athletes. So hopefully we can continue doing that. I thought you've had a couple of players. One you've already signed, one that hopefully, for your point of view, will be signing soon. Uh, William Quota is saying he joined because he thinks you going to win the Champions League with you. Uh, and Gabrielle <laughs> uh, coming in as well. Have you just talked just about, it's funny about William, but I mean about William and Gabrielle. Well, it's the right spirit. I want players that they are optimistic and, and willing and they want to win for, for our club. That's the feeling I got since uh, the first day I met William, that uh, he's not satisfied with what he's done in his career, which is a lot. And uh, he's going to bring some special qualities for our team and the type of attitude and mentality that uh, you just mentioned on your question. Regarding Gabriel, we cannot announce anything yet. Um, the deal is not finalized. Um, you all know that is a play that we're following for a long time and um, and hopefully we can get it done. You mentioned only a, a couple of times, you've only had a very short summer holiday, as it were. But are the players still fit because they had that time off during lockdown and when they came back, they kind of had a pre-season then. So are they still carrying that kind of fitness into the season? Yes, uh, what we don't know is how they're going to react when they start to play every three days and it gets to November, December, January, you know, because we put a lot of demands to them. And obviously the COVID period was a stop and then full gas starts. And obviously um, you could see the injury rates and everything went crazy up. And um, we don't know. We're going to try to protect them as much as possible, give them everything we can from the science and physical point of view for them to be in the best condition to perform. And last one from me, obviously you'll be playing again at Wembley, empty Wembley Stadium, but on Friday, so on Saturday elsewhere, Brighton are hosting a, a game uh, where there are a limited amount of fans, two and a half thousand fans going to be at the Amex, possibly the start of a return to fans coming back to football. We all hope so. We know how different um, the games are without them, so... If we can do it again, providing safe and healthy of our people, great. Let's do it and let's try how it works. Thanks, Mikael. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Ian. We'll move now to Keith Downey from Sky Sports. Hi, Mikael. Um, you, you mentioned um, Gabriel there. Is, is everything okay with, with, with that deal? Well, everything is okay when both parties sign the clubs and the players agree the terms and he goes through the medical and sometimes that in the last final stages is, is not as easy as it look. But uh, again, we are pretty positive that, uh, that we can do. It, it, it sounds, Mikel, as though you've, you've beaten off a lot of competition to, to get him. You must be pleased with that. Again, when we get it, I will be very pleased. Um, it's a player that we followed and we were very determined that um, it was the right profile for us to, to improve our squad. And, um, and if we are able to finalise it, we'll be delighted. Uh, are you able to bring us up to date um, with Ainsley, Maitland, Niles and where you are there? There's been some reports that there's been a bid rejected from Wolves. Yeah, and we're reading a lot of news about our players, which is not bad that other clubs uh, want him. But with Ainsley, he's a player, I said at the, start, at the end of the season since I joined here, that I really like. Um, the best way to show that is that I play him in the most important games of the season and he responded uh, really well. So that's where we are with the player. Would you be open to, to let him go though if he has an opportunity elsewhere? I'm always open to listen what the player is feeling, you know, at every stage of their career. And then I give them um, my opinion of how I see them, what I expect from them. And if we have the right understanding, we have to move forward together, you know, and, and if there is something that it doesn't work, obviously we have to assess it with the player and the club and, and then find the right decision for both of them. Um, can I ask you one, Mikel, about the Black Lives Matter movement? We've seen so much good work done towards the end of, of last season uh, after lockdown. Obviously, the players took a knee in, in all those matches. How are, how are Arsenal and I suppose the other clubs as well looking to keep that momentum going into the new campaign? Yeah, there have been some communication between the clubs and the Premier League and the FA how we're going to continue to support that course. And, um, and I'm sure in the next few days you'll have uh, some news about how we're going to handle that. Um, final one for me, Mikel. The big story of the week, Lionel Messi. What, what, have, you, what have you made of that looking from, from outside looking in? 
that he's been linked everywhere, you know. He has uh, more club than any other player in history after him. Um, I've been a Barcelona fan when I was young, you know, so it's always sad to see, which is, in my opinion, has been the best player in football history, leave that football club. But uh, I don't know. Let's see what happens. And if he comes to England, we're all going to enjoy that. Even if it's against Arsenal? It doesn't matter. It's good for football. You know, we'll have to find a way. If he's not there, we might find him in Champions League. We don't never know. So you de- you want the best players in your league. For me, that's the best thing as an athlete, to have the most competitive league in the world. And, and the Premier League always had that. And the times with Ronaldo, I played against him and it was great. You know, because it raises the level of every individual and every team as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Keith. Uh, we'll move next to Mark Manbryans from the Press Association. Good afternoon, Mikel. Um, can I just check, in terms of Gabriel, has uh, the medical been had or and are we now just waiting for things to be signed? Is, it, is that how close it is? We are trying to finalise the deal. That's what I'm, that I can tell you at the moment. Cool. Uh, you seem to have got your defence now almost to a point where you are happy with it. But um, in midfield, can I just ask... Um, when he's fit and available, will you be looking to re- reintegrate Matteo Guendouzi into the first team squad for the start of the new season? Well, I've been really clear that everybody starts um, from zero all the time in football. What you did two weeks ago or, or two years ago, it doesn't really matter. It's what uh, you are able to contribute to the team now. So everybody's going to have uh, the same opportunities and uh, they have to show with their performance and the attitude that... Uh, they are better than their teammates or they are um, somehow contributing with what we want to achieve this season. Have you had talks with Matteo in, in, in this off-season? Yes. And you're happy with what we've yes, watched? To tell, them that, to tell them exactly that, that, uh, that he's going to be part of the team. And at the moment, he's uh, like any other player in our squad and he deserves, first of all, to be treated exactly the same. And I will do that to my best capability. Um, another midfielder you had last season that we're not sure about the future is, is Danny Ceballos. Are you are you making a move to try and bring him back on loan for another season? Well, we had some talks. Uh, Danny knows really well what I think about him. Um, he was pretty clear with me as well that his intention was to remain with us. But obviously, his Real Madrid is involved there. I don't know yet uh, what they want to do with the player. But obviously, it's a player that uh, we are interested in because um, we really saw the last few months of the season what he's uh, capable of uh, bringing to us. Someone you definitely you already have available is, is Mohamed El Nene. Um, does he have a, a place in your squad moving forward? Well, I know him all really well. I play with him, so I know what uh, he can be. I know his strengths and weaknesses really well. He's a really positive character to have around. He has some really good qualities as well and like anybody else it's in the moment that he is with us he will be giving all our support and the best possible environment for them to perform uh, as high as they can so you expect him to stay beyond the, the end of the transfer window we don't know the 6th of october is still too far as i said and it's uh, pretty unpredictable to know what's going to happen and then just finally for me michael um i believe emmy martinez is quarantining in at the minute so probably means that burn will start in goal against Liverpool. Does that mean he he starts the season as, as your number one? Well, I love to have two goalkeepers at uh, the level of Bern and Emi. You know, last year when uh, Bern got injured, if somebody had some doubts about Emi's character or qualities, he shown uh, what he's able to do and he didn't do it for one game. He did it for 10, 11 games in a row and I'm delighted to have both of them. But they both know that first day in precision, you start again, fight for your place and and show us who is the, the one who deserves the chance to start. Is it possible to keep them both happy, do you think? I don't want to keep them both happy. I want the one that is not playing to be upset, but upset and then challenge uh, the next player to make him better or if not earn his place to do that. And it's no difference. I, I don't see personally any difference with goalkeepers with uh, fullbacks, you know. So uh, they know that. I've been really clear with them about that. And... Uh, Hopefully, they can make each other better and, most importantly, the team better. Great. Thank you, Mikel. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. We'll move on to Nick Callow from Haters. Hi, Mikel. Um, talking about the goalkeeper situation, is Bernd Leno fully fit and ready to come in against Liverpool at the weekend? Yeah, Bern is, is fit. He was almost fit, to be fair, for the last um, game against Chelsea in the FA Cup final. 
we didn't want to take uh, the risk even to get him involved uh, in the squad, but he's been training throughout the summer and uh, he's in perfect condition now. So the way Emmy played, he must be very upset that he's not able to play this weekend. He's not upset. I think he's really happy because he really understands as well Emmy's position and he knows Emmy's history at this football club and how patient and how much he's been fighting uh, to earn his place and then the right that now everybody likes him and, and um, Bern is such a great character as well for us and he's not someone that's going to be upset about the situation. No, no, so I was saying that Emmy must be upset if he's quarantining and unable for, to be able for selection. Well, that would be the case, uh, probably, but um, we obviously had a plan with all the players to make sure that uh, we have as many as possible available. How many of your new signings, in terms, especially William and Saliba, can Arsenal fans expect to see playing against Liverpool? Well, I don't know. I'll make the decision tomorrow who is going to play, who is going to be involved, but for sure they're going to see our signings playing a lot of minutes this season, so... It's not a hurry to see him in one game. I know they will be excited and desperate to see them, but uh, they will see plenty of them this year. Just finally, it's not long since you played Liverpool in the league at home, which was quite a pivotal win, wasn't it? Because Liverpool had a lot of the game, but you managed to really battle through that match. How important was that game in terms of giving the players confidence that they could be successful? Yeah, you're right. I think... um, it gave us a, a big platform of confidence and belief that we could challenge and play against the top teams at that level as well and, and beat them. You know, I'm always finding a way to win a game. And after we did it with Man City and we did it with uh, Chelsea. But um, I agree that that moment probably was a, a moment where the team clicked a little bit and went into a more belief mode. OK, cheers. Thanks, Miguel. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. Just a reminder, that section is embargoed until 3.30pm today. We now move on to...